So let me tell you about earthquake loads. Uh, for really large structures or really tall structures, you'd most likely have to do a dynamic analysis, uh, which is beyond the scope of an introductory structural analysis course. Uh, you'd have to take a course in mechanical vibrations and then uh, another course in structural dynamics, and then you'd take an earthquake engineering course. So it's in those courses that you'd learn to do a dynamic analysis. But uh, uh, for our purposes, uh, what I propose doing is uh, modeling a dynamic load from an earthquake using a static procedure. Okay, earthquake loads. Uh, consider this building, not too tall. Uh, I've got uh, a distributed load here that would model an earthquake. And in addition to the F sub X, which is the earthquake load, I've got an F sub T at the top. So we call the F sub T an additional top level force, uh, which uh, some books include that if the period is greater than 0.7 seconds. And then at the bottom, V is base shear. Uh, so I will follow the equivalent lateral force procedure given by V base shear is equal to S sub D1 W divided by T times R divided by I sub E. Uh, so I call that equation one. And then uh, the base shear that I calculate has to be between these two values. Okay, so what do all these coefficients stand for? So here's what the coefficients stand for. Uh, S sub D1, S sub DS, a seismic response coefficient based upon, well, I say local seismic activity, it's ge geographical location. Uh, some cities in the country uh, would have uh, different values uh, depending on uh, whether they're an earthquake country or not. A w total dead load, R response modification factor. It depends on the lateral bracing material, steel versus reinforced concrete, for example. T natural period of the structure, which is given by C sub T times H sub N to the X power, H sub N being the height, C sub T being the material coefficient, X uh, another material coefficient. Uh, if you're following the US system of units as opposed to the metric, uh, C sub T would be a 0 0.028 for steel, and X would be 0.8 for steel. If it's reinforced concrete, then C sub T is 0 0.016, X is 0.9. And for most other cases, C sub T would be 0 0.02, and X would be 0 0.75. Okay, so here are my formulas once again. Uh, I sub E would be the importance factor. Uh, once we know the base shear, we distribute it to each floor according to uh, this formula, which I call equation 3, uh, F sub X. Uh, the force applied to the X floor is a W sub X times H sub X to the K, divided by the summation as I goes from 1 to N, N floors, uh, of W sub I, H sub I to the K power times base shear V. Uh, w is the weight of the floor, H the height of the floor, uh, K is 1 plus period minus 1 half divided by 2. So, for example, a four-story building with 10-foot story heights, as you see in the drawing here. Each floor is 750 kips, with the roof being 500 kips. Assume uh, S sub DS is 0.19 Gs, and S sub D1 is 0.04 Gs. Uh, so this is assuming that the building is not in earthquake country. Uh, if we were uh, designing this building for California, you'd have an S sub DS closer to 1, or maybe more than 1. And then the S sub D1 would be closer to 0.5. Uh, so we're assuming this is not earthquake country. Uh, let R be equal to 4.2. Uh, that's the response modification factor. Uh, it's a measure of the strength and ductility. Uh, so in this case, I'm assuming that it's concrete with a, a steel ordinary moment resisting frame. Uh, just a system that uh, can carry both vertical and lateral loads. Uh, the bigger the R is, uh, the more damping we have and the more ductility in the building. So uh, just for the sake of argument, let's say that R is 4.2. So uh, what I'm asking about here, what is the base shear? V. What is the base shear V? See? 
And then how would V be distributed along the building's height? So I have a somewhat of a triangular distribution here. F sub 2, F sub 3, F sub 4, F sub R. Uh, that is how I would distribute the base shear to the, to the floors and to the roof. And then some books include an F sub T, so I'll see whether F sub T is a factor here. And now this is a, a shorter building. This uh, certainly wouldn't be considered a skyscraper. It's only 40 feet tall. And so uh, most likely a static analysis would be okay for this. I wouldn't uh, necessarily have to do a dynamic analysis. Well, so I calculate, I calculate the period, period C sub T times H sub N to the X power. Uh, C sub T, uh, I'm assuming 0 0.028 for steel. Uh, the height 40 feet and then the raised to the power of 0.75. X is equal to 3 fourths for steel, I'm ass assuming in this case. So I'm getting a period of 0.445 seconds, which is less than 0.7 seconds, and meaning that I can set to F sub T equal to zero. So over here, uh, the top four is zero. Well, so I calculate the total weight of the building. The total weight, 500. That's the roof, plus uh, three floors times 750 kips each, uh, 2,750 kips. Uh, R was given as 4.2. Uh, importance factor 1, uh, general use. And then S sub D1, I believe I gave that as 0 0.04. So I have all the information I need to stick into the formula for base shear. So uh, let me stick all those numbers in there to calculate this base shear. Okay, sticking all the numbers into the formula. The formula for base shear, you see I stick all the numbers in there and I get 58.855 kips as my base shear. Uh, before I take that for granted, let me uh, bring back these stipulations that I had. Okay, remember remember this equation from earlier, or this inequality I should call it? Uh, v has to be between these two values. Okay, so this value, I have all the coefficients I need, I calculate that here. About 23 kips. Now what about the right side of this inequality? I calculate that here, 124.4 kips. And I see that my base shear, 58.855, is in fact between those two limiting values. So going back to the previous slide, uh, I will write here, 58.855 kips. Okay, so that's my base shear, so the next issue would be how I distribute that to the various floors. So now I want to distribute the base shear to each floor. Uh, that is, I want to find the F sub 2, F sub 3, F sub 4, F sub R. I remember that the F sub T is zero because I had a short period in this structure. Uh, for longer period structures, for longer period structures, the F sub T is sometimes taken as uh, 0 0.07 times period times base shear, uh, as long as that F sub T is less than or equal to 0.25 times the base shear. Uh, that's assuming that T is greater than 0.7 seconds, but in this case, remember that the period was less than 0.7 seconds, so the F sub T is zero, as I stated a moment ago. So when I distribute the base shear V to each floor, I use these formulas that I presented earlier. Uh, I propose setting up a table to organize all this, but uh, before I do that, let me calculate the K part. Okay, so I stick the appropriate values into the formula for K. Uh, remember the period that I calculated, 0.445 seconds. I stick everything in and I get K is 0.9725. Okay, well, uh, here's the kicker. I don't want K to be less than one. So I'll actually adopt k is equal to 1, and uh, I suppose I could have determined that without actually sticking the period that I calculated into the formula. Uh, if the period is less than or equal to 0.5 seconds, we just use k is equal to 1. Okay, create a table to organize all this data. Okay, floor, weight of each floor, height of each floor, uh, w, I, uh, w sub i times h sub i to the k, uh, wx hx to the k divided by the summation of wi hi to the k, and then uh, f sub x is the last column. Uh, there were four floors to this building. Okay, 
second floor, third floor, fourth floor roof. Uh, see the weights? Put the weights here. Uh, how do I get the height? The second floor is 10 feet up. The third floor, 20 feet up. Uh, the fourth floor, 30 feet up. Okay, that's where I'm getting these. The height of each floor. Okay, remember that K is 1. And be careful, that exponent K only applies to the H sub I. It doesn't apply to the W sub I. Uh, although in this case, K is 1, so it doesn't matter much. But to just be careful with that exponent. Uh, multiply this column by this column to give you this column. And then uh, once you do that, add it up. And like magic, it gets done. So uh, 500 times 40, 20,000. 750 times 30, 22,500, etc. Uh, add up the weight column. The building weighs 2,750 kips. Add up the W sub I, H sub I to the K column. 65,000. Uh, remember that number. Okay, 65,000, important number. Okay, now to fill in this column. Okay, what number goes here? See where I'm pointing? How do you calculate what number goes there? Okay, well, look what I did here. To get this number, take this number, W sub R, H sub R, R for roof, raised to the K power. That's what I'm doing down here. W sub R, H sub R to the K power, that's 20,000. This 20,000 divided by the sum of W sub I, H sub I to the K. That would be this number. Okay, so that would be 0 0.3077. Here, I forgot to put it. Okay, so what, how did I get this number, 0 0.3077? 20,000 divided by 65,000. How do I get this number? 22,500 divided by 65,000. How about this number? Uh, 15 divided by 65. And this number? Uh, 7,500 divided by 65,000. And so I fill in the other entries here. Okay, now when you add up this column, you should get approximately 1. Uh, because of rounding, it might be a little bit off, but you get approximately 1. Okay, the last column, F sub X. Uh, so what does F sub X represent? Uh, well, that's the uh, amount of base shear that is carried by each floor. So remember the formula for that? This formula. Remember that? So how do I get this number? The number right here, how do I get that? Well, I'd multiply this number, the 0 0.3077, by the base shear. So remember this previous slide? I calculated the base shear already. So if I multiply this number by the base shear, I should get this number. And similarly with the other four uh, cells, or the other three cells here. Okay, so I'm going to fill those in. Okay, so here's the sample calculation for the roof. 0 0.3077 times uh, the base shear, 58.855. Uh, 18.110 uh, kips uh, that will be carried by the roof. And then similarly with the others, so a 0 0.3462 times the base shear, 58.855, should be a 20.376, uh, etc. Okay, so this column right here, okay, remember these numbers? Uh, notice that if you add them up, you wind up with 58.862, which would approximately equal to uh, the original base shear that I calculated. Uh, there'll be rounding discrepancies, but... Uh, this is how I distribute the base shear to each of the floors. So remember these numbers. This many kips to the roof. This many kips to the fourth floor. This many kips to the third floor. This many kips to the second floor. So here I show how the uh, forces apply to each of the different levels of this building. Remember the base shear 58.855 kips. And I calculate these loads is being applied to each of the floors.